Alice Sarah Ott is a world-renowned pianist. She is one of the most sought-after individuals, co-starring with the most prestigious orchestras. Ott has won numerous competitions when she was a teenager, surprising her audiences. She has continued to expand her horizons, finding new ways of expressing her music. Music is something that challenges us and it, it, it speaks to us on a completely different level. It just goes beyond the barriers of language. It shocks us, it comforts us, it, it moves us, it irritates us, it does so many things with us. Ott has developed multiple sclerosis two years ago, but continues to play. She recorded her latest creations for the first time in three years. We asked her thoughts on music and what keeps her going despite challenges. Ott made a visit to a church in Munich, Germany. Her album recording was done there as the large space helps prevent infection during the coronavirus pandemic. It was probably the most personal recording I've done so far because I've just spent so much time invested so much time in, in, in creating this program and uh, there's lots of hard blood in there, especially also in a time when, when everything else is frozen. This is almost the only thing uh, I've done musically uh, this year, so um, I think there's lots of emotions connected to this recording project. Chopin's Prelude Opus 28 consists of 24 short pieces. Ott combined Prelude and seven contemporary works, naming the album Echoes of Life. The original idea came from my long-term wish to record all the 24 preludes by Frédéric Chopin. When I started working on his preludes, I couldn't help thinking uh, about life itself. I think our, our life itself is built out of lots of preludes because one thing and one, one conversation, one acquaint acquaintance, one happening in our life leads to the next one. But this is not the end. It's not the solution. It, you know, what happens next leads to the next one again. And as long as we're alive, everything is connected together, but there is not, no end to it. But life doesn't always go as it's planned. And I've only had 32 years of experience, but also in my life so far, I've had uh, moments and happenings that kind of threw me off the, the, the planned path. I chose seven contemporary pieces which reflect on seven of these moments in my life. They reflect on either specific moments or thoughts or happenings that have influenced me so far. This time she chose Litany One Adagio by Japanese composer Takemitsu Toru as one of the contemporary pieces. This piece by Takemitsu reflects on my identity because I grew up between two cultures. Ott was born in Germany in 1988. Her father was German and her mother Japanese. Ott felt increasingly uncomfortable when she was growing up, being neither 100% German or 100% Japanese. For me, 
it is a daily procedure to hear the question, where are you from? And this is something that happens to me three or four times a day, sometimes five times, sometimes six times. So my journey <laughs> was from where am I from to who am I? And I don't identify being Japanese. I don't identify myself being German. I am a human being, <laughs> inhabitant of this planet, and music is my language. That is how I identify myself. This piece by um, Toru Takemitsu actually reflects also a lot on his Id own identity journey. And you can hear Western and Eastern patterns clashing. And still, it is something that goes beyond that. And that's why I chose uh, this piece, because it just reminds me of the struggle I went through and I still go through. Ott was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis two years ago. It damaged her central nervous system and the disease can cause destruction to the limbs. Chopin's Prelude Number no. 20 became a special piece for Ott as it was inspired by this illness. It is written in C minor. And C minor actually, since two years, plays a big role in my life. Because two years ago, I had to experience a concert in which I lost control over my left hand. And um, when it happened, I played a piece that was written in C minor. I started having this cramp, eventually lost complete control over my left hand. That I, I was trying to grab a chord and my left hand would just kind of float around in the air. I just remember how everything went kind of silent and white around me. It was probably just a couple of seconds, but it felt like two, three minutes. It was one of the most frightening things. Um, and I also thought for a couple of seconds that I would never be able to play the piano again. I had to cancel a concert in the middle of it. It never happened to me before. Multiple sclerosis is a disease that doesn't have a known cure, yet Aunt continues to get familiar with the latest findings of the illness. For me personally, it was the biggest help to understand how, how our body works and how our brain works and what causes this infection, what is happening inside your body and what do all the medications do? What do they prevent? And to understand all this helped me so much. And it gave me also much more confidence. Ott disclosed her condition on her website shortly after being diagnosed with the disease. I decided I have to make this public because first of all, it is to protect myself and protect my family because it, it, is a it is a disease that you can right now not heal. So that means I have to live with it for the rest of my life. And um, I had to cancel a couple of concerts because of this. And I just did not, and people already started worrying and I just did not want to come up with, with, uh, with another excuse or uh, like a lie. When I got diagnosed, I wish that there were maybe more known cases or people I could, uh, in the same business, I could, I could ask for their own experiences. So I thought it was very important to make it public. So first of all, that also other people don't feel like they have to hide it when, when they get diagnosed with it. Because in our society, we do not talk about our weaknesses. We do not talk about uh, illnesses. Um, and especially with the whole social media generation, it's all about the positive things in life and the great things about life we want to share. But, you know, life is not just <laughs> walking on, on sunshine. It, it, it comes with all its tolls. And uh, at the same time, if I continue 10 years and 20 years, and if, if I'm one of the cases where actually uh, I manage to have it under control and can still do and fulfill my dreams, then this is something people also should know about. 
It's been four months since the last concert was interrupted by Ott's symptoms from the illness. She is now back on the same stage. She performed pieces that were less of a burden on her body as her energy level hadn't returned completely. I spoke to the audience in the beginning. Uh, I asked them how many of them were in the, in the concert in January, and it was like 95%. And it was very emotional because when I came on stage, they just didn't stop clapping. And, and, and you could see that this, they, they went through this uh, moment and, you know, there were no complaints about, uh, about it after the concert, though people didn't know what was, happen what was happening. I felt like, you know, we experienced this together and we kind of overcame it together. So, yes, it will definitely be one of the most special concerts uh, in my life. Odd has been searching for classical music that resonates with audiences. Her quest has become even stronger as she has more time to reflect on her creations during the pandemic lockdown. It's one year since uh, the pandemic has started. I think it was also a good time for many of us to rethink what the music industry should look like, what, how, what should still be continued when it goes back, what should be changed. And for me, it was a year of lots of reflection, of course. And some of these uh, um, changes that happened uh, inside me over the last couple of years were, of course, strengthened through this time. And there's so much more we can do in, in, in bringing it um, to closer to the spirit of our time. You know, we use the technology we have nowadays. Nowadays we could create so much more and just by changing the lighting, but the, you can use visuals. And I think there is just so much potential. And with that also, we actually influence how the audience receives or how the audience actually feels inside the hall. I always encourage my audience to actually take a position that makes them feel comfortable. And everybody, I think, has a different posture for that. I play barefoot because I don't believe in dress codes. When sometimes people come in in jeans and t-shirt, people will think it's not polite. But this is uh, where I see the problem because uh, who are we to tell people how to, to be and how to dress themselves and how to enjoy the music. I think the person in jeans and t-shirt has his right in, in a concert as well as the person who might maybe wears a gown or a tuxedo. Um, but again, we should not limit people. I think music and the world is so diverse. The music is so diverse. Classical music is so versatile and diverse. I think maybe in the classical music industry, we, we might, some of us might have forgotten this. And um, uh, yeah, it is, it is about unity and it's not about the differences. Art left us with these words. My current motto, or at least for the last two or three years, is, is uh, this is water. And uh, this is water is actually uh, an essay by David Foster Wallace. It is about, you know, being aware of what is happening around us, where we are. It really actually just puts us back to a point where you think, okay, so we, we are, wait, it's, I am not the center of the world. And I think sometimes it is important to remember how small life actually is.